Okay. So I am going to be in the only of the So is it okay? This is a Periscope. It's a live broadcast. Is that okay with you guys? To whom? Uh, to anybody who tunes in, which is so far two people. Is well, that all right? You're going to need to crawl. Can you do that while you're oh, I can. Well, I don't know if I can crawl while I'm doing this, but I'll try. Okay. Right. So these are the guys you want to introduce yourselves? I don't know. Hi, I'm Marcos with the Super Tanker. Okay. Jim Fish with the Lee. Okay. Uh, and Jamie Tackman. Okay. Yeah. You're one of the pilots. Uh huh. Yeah. You did a great job. Right. Just watching. Pilot, yeah? He's yeah. our lead. Oh, yeah? Okay. So uh, you're on the main deck. I'm the lead of my company, too. Only. You're on the main deck of the 747, the Global Super Tanker. Okay. Um, this, one, this one used to be first class right here. Well, obviously, all, all the seats were removed. It started off as a passenger bird, and then it was converted to a, uh, a freighter. Uh, oh. It flew as a freighter for Evergreen for a couple of years. Okay. And then it got parked in the desert. And, uh, now it's I know where, too. To a super uh, it was probably, what's that name of that town? In Southern California? Uh, Victorville. Victorville, right. Uh, there's a ton of 747s there. We'll go back to the uh, Okay. The Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Those big tanks. Whoops. Alright. Wow. So, can you hear me, Jamie? Yeah, I got So, you. there are, there's 20 tanks on the aircraft. The two tanks forward that are thwart ships are what we call eulage tanks. This is what holds the air pressure for the drop. So, basically, transient air lives here until we actually make a drop. And it's two complete separate systems, a right and a left. They're about 9,700 gallons each, so we have a total of 19,200 gallons uh, is our total capacity. All of the fluid is held in the next five tanks on each side, so there's 10 fluid tanks. Okay. They go back basically like a syringe. The plunger of your syringe is the air in this eulage tank. Yeah. And then in the very back, You'll have to walk back there for you to see it. We have eight tanks really? that are our air, our high pressure tanks. They hold 200 pounds each of pressure, and it's about 2,700 pounds of air when we fill them up. Just, really? Just the air weighs 2,700 pounds. That from is nuts. Hole. That is nuts. So here's where we have to crawl. Okay. It's just a quick crawl over here. Crawling. Don't crack your head. No, I will. All right, wait, wait, it's my shoulder. It's your shoulder you'll crack, not your head. <laughs> now, how much of this, uh, Marco, is part of the old system? Um, the design is exactly the same. These are all new tanks. All new? Yeah, they had to They had to do new tanks. There was issues with the old ones. Uh, so this is a second set of tanks. So this is our first um, fluid tank. And here you'll see, this is a pressure regulator valve. This is where the high pressure air comes in that's 200 pounds and it gets regulated down to about 50 to 60 pounds to go to the eulage tanks, and that happens right there. Can you make it, Jim? Oh yeah, he's nimble as a cat. All right. So like we said, the review is a 19,200 gallon split in half. And basically you're looking at one long syringe divided into five little sausage tanks. Now, one of the neat things that I remember about the old system is that these guys would told me how much flex from one end of this thing to the other is. What, do, you, do you know the distance? I, I mean, it's, it's like a ridiculous it's, number, it's, like two feet or three feet. I don't know feet. if it's two feet. It's probably really? eight foot. Oh. Means there's a large movement. And one of the ways we compensate for that, um, all of these joints that you see, if you look right there, they're, rub they're, they're, they're rubberized. Rubber. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like, like on a bridge. Tanks, we have these big right. uniflex couplings is what they're called. They're big, thick rubber like a tire and they couple these together. So we'll Very keep cool. moving aft. Now this is this is all removable. Technically it is. It's a probably a week <laughs> process. Yeah. One week process for it to be removable. Wow. I don't think they ever designed this to convert back. Yeah. yeah. But it is absolutely they're actually on cookie sheets. Yeah, I see that. And the cookie sheets are on the original freight conversion cargo floor. Yeah. So they're roll on, roll off, and you're looking at a uh, you're looking at a joint right there. I'd like yeah. you to take particular attention to the curtain that we crawled through in front. And you'll notice that there's these cookie sheets have yep. these vinyls between them. Yep. That's not normal. That's unique to the super tanker. And basically what happens, if you imagine a kiddie swimming pool made out of rubber, 
we've turned the upper deck of this aircraft into a rubberized kitty, kitty swimming, swimming pool. pool. If we have a massive leak loss, mm -hmm. that curtain is not for privacy. It's not to keep you from seeing the tanks. That keeps the water that would be lost on the main deck from going any further forward than that. And our emergency procedure, if you, oh, and I need to tell you guys when you walk around, do not step on the purple cable. The purple cable is actually a water detection cable. So don't step on it. If you stay on the sides, you'll be fine. If you move about on the cookie sheets, the, the purple cable is everywhere. One drop of sweat can technically set that off and give us a leak warning upstairs on the main control panel. Huh. That leak warning would tell us to go into a leak loss emergency procedure. We pitch up to five degrees nose up, and we want that water to all move aft. Now, it can't get down into the E&E &E compartment or any, anywhere here because it's all that kiddie swimming pool we talked about. And we'll get to the very back. We'll see what happens. Jamie, one of the differences in this tank system and the uh, original is this station right here in the 400 couldn't accept the weight of the tank system in the Classic. And the, the quickest solution to that was to cut this tank down on each side. We, we shortened it. And not so much the loss of the steel that came out, but it's the, the volume of the liquid that came out of it. Uh, and because it got shorter, you'll see this coupling makes the difference here. I see. That's where the difference made up, and of course we still have the Uniflex. God, these, these, this, the machining and the manufacturing of these is just crazy. Isn't it something? Yeah. We'll keep moving back to the full part. curtain here, if we were to have a major leak loss, this curtain is just a speed bump. It's slow just it trying to slow oh, yeah. the water down as it's moving aft, because keep in mind we got the kitty pool underneath it. Yeah. It's keeping it from going anywhere, but it's going to continue aft. We'll just swoop by there. Through here. If you guys want to stand up on that where I was just walking. Okay. To look oh. over the top. That's our ejection mount. Oh. No. So there's two on each side. Two to the right, two to the left. And you can see the big land rods on either side, yeah. on either one. Those are the, those are the shut off valves. Yeah. And they are just like a butterfly valve on a highway. They just, they just turn 90 degrees right inside that house. If you've ever worked on a carburetor, that, that valve is in there just, yeah. just fluttering like that. Um, they're, they can be calibrated to any drop setting. For this, they're set it. Pull on, pull open, or fully closed. Uh, so what happens here is you see where those four tubes go down. You've been underneath the aircraft and you can see where they exit. All of the water in the leak loss would go down through that hole. Really? And then around the, the nozzles where they exit, they actually have perforated holes around it like a donut. And there's a float that, that lives on top of that. When we pressurize the cabin or when we roll, well, it's down and it's sealed. We don't lose air to pressurize the cabin. But when water hits those slopes, they come up like a bobber, yeah. and all that water goes right out yeah. on the outside of the nozzle. And then we have our eight high-pressure tanks. There's four for each side, basically. They're two completely independent systems. We can actually defer one system for a maintenance issue and, and still fly with 9,700 gallons. With one side completely in. Wow. And Jamie, you may have heard about the tactics with this airplane. We can carry two different props. We can do a foam on one side. Ah. And you know, for, for, yeah. for immediate mitigation of a home or something like that. Yeah. And retarded on the other. Yeah. Uh, so we can carry any, any, any two different products. And we can also do up to eight centimeter loads. We can do each side in quarters. So we can give you eight little baby shots, four medium shots, two yeah. pretty good shots, or the one you know mile shot like you saw today. Yeah. And we wow. can we can calibrate to do it any way we want. Wow. So we regulate our coverage with uh, pressure in the Ulrich tank, and then how many how many valves we use. That is, <clears throat> this is so much different than the other. It's just amazing. Yeah. And, and this is just second gen. I mean, they're talking about uh, carbon fiber tanks next time around. And these are all students. Oh, excuse me. Hmm. Jamie, we're 